Hello, Tim Barnes here, uh, Marion County Extension Educator, helping out tonight with uh, a sheep webinar here, talk uh, some about the lamb markets. And I, I guess the best way to start off is just say, wow, uh, you know, the prices have just been tremendously good, uh, seem each week, of course, as we're into the as we're into the religious holidays, uh, and traditionally this is a time of the year where we do have a, a little higher premium in the market. So uh, yes, enjoy that, but uh, it, it's really interesting. Um, we were really resilient uh, through the, the COVID last year. Uh, we dipped down there maybe uh, one week in, in, in March. Uh, as you compare us to the other protein sources, we held up extremely well. The markets came back really within a week or so. Uh, you know, as more people ate at home, uh, you know, families tried lamb and they enjoyed it. And uh, they also really seemed to enjoy the non-traditional cuts, the more the ground product than the cube product. Uh, but again, they couldn't go to the restaurants, but they ate lamb. And that sure is helping us through this uh, time. Uh, demand for Ohio lambs, of course, part of that's our location, which we're, we're part of that. We know that we're close to the population centers on the East Coast. That uh, surely is helping us. But uh, the roasters are the 60 pound lambs now, $3. And, and again, you'll, you'll hear people talk about, you know, almost $4 in some of these sales. If you look at the charts, basically that's uh, pretty much close to a dollar higher than 12 months ago and, and uh, close to a dollar over the five-year average. And uh, we're seeing an additional uh, change a little bit in, in the lamb weights. There is more of a premium for the lighter lambs. Um, you know, these non-traditional markets are, are helping us by increasing that a little bit. And when I say the traditional markets, uh, that is racks, uh, loins, and legs. Um, you know, those tend to go a little more for the roaster, uh, restaurant trade, but uh, our big retail, part of retail also, but through the last year, uh, it has uh, gone over more towards ground lamb and the cube product. <laughs> As you look at this chart and uh, throughout today, uh, you know, most of the data, I think all the data I show here is uh, from United Producers here and uh, specifically their Mount Vernon uh, collection point. But here over the last five years, you see the, the chart for the yearly averages uh, for the 60 pound or what they call uh, the roaster lambs. And uh, really uh, that 304 for 2021 just does represent January and February. Uh, but again, uh, our, our location is extremely important here. Uh, it's a pretty consistent market if you drop out the 21 and look at the rest of them, a slight dip there in 19. Uh, but again, uh, these 60 pound lambs over the last five years have been extremely profitable and uh, very financially positive for most sheep operations. <clears throat> market weights are getting lighter. Um, this is USDA numbers as you look at the 65 pound lambs and down, uh, you know, they're 12% more of those are sold. And I think you know, add that to these up to the 80, under the 84 pound lambs, uh, you know, that represents 30%, 36% of the market, uh, you know, has changed. Uh, we see a reduction as we look at these bigger carcasses that need a little more fabrication. Uh, but it, it's interesting the way this kind of has changed. Chart here shows uh, five year averages, and I pulled out the 131 pound and, uh, and bigger lambs and the roasters. I did break out the hair lambs and also the meat goats just for comparison purpose. As you can see, uh, the, the 2020 is on the left in all those, and uh, 2016 ends up being the, the chart, the brown chart on the right. You can see in the, in the big lambs, just pretty consistent. We hang in that $150, a hundred range. Uh, you know, over the last five years, you can see the high there is 161.82, the low 150, but uh, just pretty similar. Roasters uh, popped up a little higher this year. Last year, they were a, a tick lower. And again, um, uh, you know, no real reason for that. Demand probably drives us as much as anything. Uh, but you can see a pretty consistent price like we showed on the earlier slide for the roasters. 
hair lambs, uh, a little uh, discount for them in the Ohio market, but still uh, very, very uh, positive numbers there. Meat goats have been just, you know, really hot for the last five years. You see this chart, they really show that. You look at the high of being last year, the 273. Uh, and again, but they're, they're considerably higher. Uh, again, remember a goat at sale weight is uh, total pounds is a little lighter animal than you compare to, uh, to the sheep in the same situation. <clears throat> Next chart is uh, I, I wanted to do a little comparison or at least to get you to think a little bit about uh, the big lambs versus uh, the, the smaller lambs and just the price difference you see. Uh, this was just for last year, January through December, but you can see the, the, the discount of, as the lambs got bigger. And I guess a, as a, a lamb feeder and a lamb producer, you want to make sure that that discount, you know, uh, covers your cost of production. And with feed costs being considerably higher this year with $5 corn uh, and uh, $400 soybean meal, you know, you don't want to go to a lot of work and a lot of expense and uh, actually end up netting less profit dollars than you could just sell the lambs at a lighter weight. Uh, this chart is for the big lambs. This is for the last five years. Uh, you can see the high was in 2017, kind of in that late summer, uh, before a lot of the, the big lambs uh, really hit the market. It was 217 a little over that, the low then was last year, and that 120, and, and if you look at that chart and go back and analyze it, uh, you remember that was kind of in the time frame when there was a lot of discussion and the packing plants out west closed down, a lot of indecision on what was gonna happen, and then a couple plants are, are in the process of reopening, or maybe have reopened now, uh, give a little more stability to the market. But it, it, you know, as you look at the differences and the movement through the years, uh, pretty predictable, you know, in the way our markets move. Uh, we have a bounce up this time of year in the ethnic markets and uh, religious holidays. And then as the supply of those bigger lambs begin to hit the market in early and late fall, uh, a little bit of depression in, in price. Just through this slide in again to, to talk about the, you know, the goat, uh, the term, you know, the, the market's been on fire. Uh, and again, realize there's no traditional meat system for goats, no processing uh, packer, uh, processing plants, and no really designated uh, large scale packer. Uh, it's basically a, a primarily an ethnic demand. Uh, again, like we talked there a little bit earlier, a goat will be a, a little lighter weight. And so the extra price compared to a lamb then of a little heavier lamb, a little lower price, actually dollars spent for that protein source of goat versus lamb ends up being extremely uh, similar. A big part of our, our market in, um, uh, is the imports. And again, the imports that come in here, uh, basically the one and two would be Australia and New Zealand, where they come from, and they can be and are considerably cheaper uh, than what we produce domestically. Uh, again, uh, the chilled, the frozen, uh, not as much fresh product coming in, uh, but again, uh, they, they are an important part to meet the demand we have. Uh, it, it is important, and why is it important, number one, as we look at the numbers from 2020, the lamb crop was down 1%. Uh, lamb slaughter was down 1%. Um, total numbers then obviously were down. Uh, like we mentioned, we did have the, the questions of the slaughter facilities and the infrastructure. Um, so uh, to meet the demand of the American public, uh, imports are very important to us. Um, as you look at this chart, it represents from 06 to, uh, to well, this year or beginning of this year, but just a pretty steady increase. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, so it's pretty much uh, consistent when you look at it on a monthly basis, about 20,000 uh, pounds of imported product, 20 to 25,000 uh, each month. And uh, that helps us uh, to meet the demand that we cannot meet with our internal production. 
what's ahead for 21 uh high u numbers remain steady and that's you know, we're roughly in that 123 to 25,000 uh, head range uh the regional markets uh, continue to show demand for lamb and uh, again through this covid uh project we've been through that's extremely positive we're lucky to be here where we are and located uh, and hopefully the the families that have tasted lamb and tried lamb through this at home experience will compete uh, continue to eat that product as we get back and start traveling more and more uh, the smaller carcasses uh, you know I think they're here to stay part of that is the popularity of some of our hair breeds the Dorfers and Katahdins uh, probably just can't carry as much uh, massive weight as some of our black faced breeds I, and I, I think they will dictate more and more of the type of sheep we raise and the size of carcasses that uh, will be available. Restaurant trades, uh, we're hearing now as we right here in the, towards the end of March, uh, you know, more and more of these uh, restrictions are being lifted. We're gonna get back to eating. The traditional uh, restaurant trade will come back for the racks, the loins uh, and the legs. Um, you know, is this a time uh, to consider expansion. Uh, obviously, uh, we're working on redoing the high sheep budget uh, for production, but uh, quickly looking at the numbers, if you can realistic pencil in uh, some of these, maybe not at this upper level that we're currently at uh, right today, but if you have a realistic approach and look at the last five years, uh, obviously I think there are dollars out there uh, to be pocketed by uh, adding sheep or goats as, a, as an enterprise for your farming operation. So if you have additional questions, we'd be glad to answer them.